commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Hallelujah. 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 Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Family of Yah, children of the King. Bless Yahweh. Let us greet one another. Hallelujah. On this beautiful Shabbat morning.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory and the lift 
Yeah. 
And Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahweh your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mizraim, and now the house of slavery. Do not have any other mighty ones against my face. Do not make for yourself a carved image, or any likeness of that, which is in the heavens above, or which is in the earth beneath, or which is in waters under the earth. Do not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, Yahweh, your Elohim, am a jealous elf, visiting the crookedness of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but show love and commitment to thousands of those who love me and guard my commands. Do not bring the name of Yahweh, your Elohim, to naught, for Yahweh does not leave the one unpunished, who brings his name to not. Remember the Sabbath day to set it apart. Six days you labor and shall do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh Elohim. In it, not do any work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor a stranger who is within your gates. For in six days Yah made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. For in the rest of the seventh day, therefore Yah blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart. Respect your father and your mother, so that your days are prolonged upon the soil which Yahweh Elohim has given you. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness against your neighbor. Do not covet neighbor's house, do not covet neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, whatever belongs to your neighbors. All right. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Y'all's good, isn't he? commandments and keep them too, isn't it? Hallelujah. Most high of y'all, we come to you as humble as we know how. The magnificent name of y'all, Shul sure, Hamashiach, Jesus the Christ. We need you this hour, this day, and this time that we're in. We're asking about a power of the Ruach that you would open our understanding, that we might comprehend the scriptures and bring forth fruit, and magnify your name in the midst of a wicked and perverse generation. We thank you for the blood that never loses power, and the blood that it has 
written our name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. We can only hope we be accounted worthy of the vocation with which we've been called. We hope to only bring glory to your magnificent name, feed us your truth, and let this light shine before the Gentiles that your name will be glorified amongst the heathens of the world. In Jesus' magnificent name, hallelujah. Hallelujah may be seated. All right, now, somebody got to be light to the Gentiles. And everybody thinks that the Gentiles is, it's crazy what they done done to our minds. They think them Israelis are the real Jews. That's all but laughable, comical. You know, I did a video. Um, the NFL is getting ready to play the Black National Anthem. We're getting ready to see some controversy this season. Because, you know, when I hear stuff like that, it gives me an opportunity to tell truth about history. <clears throat> and don't you know, instead of people responding to the truth that I'm speaking about history, they're mad and upset because I won't leave things the way they are? You don't have to let me disturb you. All you got to do is turn the channel. I mean, that's about 7.5 billion people out here. The other day I had somebody else done took their husband's computer monitor and smashed it on the ground because he got sick and tired of hearing my voice. I said, don't, don't get me wrong. I, I, I guarantee I know who it was. Really? You know who it was? Sure I do. Who? A Christian. Nobody hates truth more than a Christian. And automatically, when I start talking like that, you know where the pagan minds go, right? They think I'm talking about Jesus. No, I'm talking about your false religion that Jesus had nothing to do with. Did it disturb y'all when I first started talking about Christianity and you was a Christian? It didn't. Well, my child back there, she called me the, um, Diablo. She said, that man is Diablo. Isn't that amazing? And then she ends up marrying Diablo. <laughs> How much sense does that make? How much sense does that make? Somebody starts telling you the truth and Get you to pick up the book for the first time in your life and you got to do something let me see you're a pk child too ain't you tj for real you grew up in the church man what does your dad think about your transformation not really fond of it wow he wouldn't sit down and have an intelligent conversation with you? Does he ever watch the broadcast? Really? We'll send him a shout out. Just tell him to watch his broadcast. Hey, Pops. Pops Clemens. We want to have a dialogue with you. I don't think he gonna do it, though, either. Nah, he don't do it. Nothing get people running more than truth does, does it? Hmm? And amazing. We um we have a lot of virgins in the ministry. That is something to clap your hands about. And every single one of them has got all kinds of do you say inquiries or inquiries? So is inquiries spelled the same way inquiries are? I mean, I'm asking because I'm not speaking my native language here. You know, I'm. Is it? It's spelled the same. See, if I was writing a newsletter, I'd have been confused. I'd have had to call Mother Carol and say, hey, how you spell this thing? Now, if I would have spelled it my way, it would have made sense to me. But we ain't trying to spell stuff my way, though, is it? We could. It don't work, though. Man. Inquiries. We got a lot of virgins in the ministry, and every one of them are asked for, for uh, about at least three, four men. 
And they want to get married too. The only one problem though, we got to make sure that our men is ready for our virgins. You know, if you are a man and you got a bunch of daughters, you marry them, the Bible says you perform a weighty matter. That means you, you girls are nothing but a bunch of weights. Don't, don't get mad at me. Where's, where's my granddad? Where's Naughty at? You still ain't paid me my $5. You lost your bet. Yes, you did. I ain't done. She going. She told me, what was she, bro, for him, 16 or 17 then? 16? Something like She says, I ain't never going to get married. I'm going to get dad to put me a, a little RV right there, and I'm going to stay next to mom and dad all my life. Didn't she? I said, bullshit. <clears throat> you wait till you turn 18. Something going to take place. Not me. Not me. Uh-uh. Okay. Want to bet five dollars on it? Sure, I'll bet you. Bet you anything. I don't know five dollars do. We want to take your whole life savings. <laughs> did I win the bet, Brother Freeman? Did I win the bet, Bobby? Come on, Bobby. Did I win the bet? So where's my five dollars at? Do y'all remember, in my day growing up, there used to be a time that girls used to be gross. Anybody ever had that experience before? We was like, girls, ugh. But we were five and six years old. Five and six years old now, trying to chase girls. We was like, man, y'all girls, y'all gone over there somewhere. Come over here messing up everything. That didn't last long, did it? All of a sudden, you're about 12, 13. <laughs> What's going on? Well, all of a sudden, that girl did. Well, all of a sudden, now she looking good. And if we're going to do this thing and continue to keep doing this thing y'all's way, we're the only last hope left. I'm not saying just straight way. I'm talking about people who keep the commandments like us. Because you know when you get married, children coming, right? And when children come, somebody got to be raised the right way. Did y'all hear the broadcast last night? I saw two men in bed. It was sick, and I was like, Phew, boy, let me see if I can stomach this one. Transformers. Had a, some adopted, adopted. Somebody's little baby. And they so damn sick. Try to sit up there, one of them tried to sit up there and breastfeed. The baby. Then they wonder why come the baby rejected. That's why I said, I said, man, whoo, boy, I said, I got to be at the end of my days because the father know I need to get up out of here before I kill somebody. You do know that in our day and our culture and stuff, and we're getting ready to head to a world without rule of law. That's why it's good to be trained up. Are you following me? Because you know y'all is a man of war. Y'all know that, right? I was having a talk with a Christian the other day, and, and he says, he says, you, you that preacher on YouTube, ain't you? Yeah, sure am. Sure am. He says, you got your gun on you? I said, you like to know? I said, man, you know I got my gun on me. He says, so what are you afraid of? I said, definitely not you. He said, but don't you have Jesus? I said, yeah, I sure do. I said, let me ask you a question instead of you asking me the questions. 
I said, did Jesus' disciples walk around armed or, or did they walk around with Bibles in their hand? Uh, oh, 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 oh. Uh, yeah, they all had swords, didn't they? Think about that for a second. Twelve brothers, come up here for a second. Twelve of y'all brothers, twelve armed brothers. You ain't armed, sit your ass down. You already in dereliction of duty. Twelve armed. Can y'all imagine? I got twelve disciples, right? Let's just pretend I'm Jesus. Oh. We got twelve. Now watch this. We getting ready to go on a missionary journey. All right? So here we are. We're going to walk on a missionary journey. Come on. And of course, everybody's looking. There's Jesus. There's Jesus. There's Jesus. There's Jesus. There's Jesus. Woo wee. Look at Jesus. Woo wee. Look at Jesus. But the wicked people are going, You see all the men with him? This ain't the day to try anything. Y'all see what I mean? He got 12 disciples armed walking around. Little lowly Jesus. Huh? So he's up there on the Mount of Olives getting ready to feed people. He ain't got to worry about no scribes or Pharisees or no Romans coming and jumping him because he got 12 disciples ready to take somebody out at any time. Think about that. If that wasn't the case, then why when um, they came in the Garden of Gethsemane, they come the Romans and stuff, and the first thing they try to do is arrest him, and, and Peter took his sword unsheathed and cut off the guy's ear. Then Jesus said, now listen to me. All my taught ones, he who lives by the sword shall die by the sword. Did he say that? No, he just told him, Peter, put the sword up in the place right now. No, what was his place at? Right here on the side. <laughs> He didn't tell him to get rid of the sword because he's trying to prevent what y'all was having done. But these were men. They weren't like these coward Christians today. That shocked y'all, didn't it? Didn't it shock you when you first came here? Little humble Christian. Hmm? They were men. They lived as men, walked as men, talked as men, fought as men, and was warriors like men. That is the Israelite culture from the beginning to the end. They were not soft. They were not effeminate. They didn't have no female tendencies. There was nothing feminine about them. So one day Jesus was having one of these dissertations. He was speaking to someone. He said, he says, uh, What do we do if we don't have one? A sword. What did Jesus say, disciples? Sell your cloak and do what? Go buy one. Now, we can't sell these rags we got today for a Glock 19, could we? They must, they must be some serious cloak then, wasn't it? Worth a lot of money if you could sell it and go buy a sword back then. See how it goes against, that's Luke twenty two thirty six. 36. See how it goes against the whole paradigm? Hear that? That's actually a commandment. If you don't even have one, then you sell what you got and go sell your garment and go buy one. And in the state of Tennessee, if you're 21, you don't even need a license to carry a gun no more. You just carry a gun if you ain't a felon. In a knife? Now, how is it that in Chicago, 290 people dying on the 4th of July weekend? We ain't hear nothing like that in the South. You know why? Look how at peace our assembly is when everybody's armed. Y'all remember when all that mess was going down? When I told y'all, it was like I was a prophet all of a sudden, wasn't it? I said, you watch and see. They're going to start hitting all these schools and all these churches as soft targets. And then lo and behold, sometimes you, you know when you say something, you wish you didn't say nothing at all. Next thing you know, then we see that guy go in and start shooting people in church like he was in duck, playing duck hunt. 
We offered our services to actually go train some churches. Told them the only thing you need is just pay for my plane ticket out there. Want to give a little offering, give a little offering. They turned it down. Next thing you know, here we go again. So this time, one guy decided he was going to go inside of a church. And he started, he got off, he, he shot a couple of them. But one guy made a shot from like here to Zakina. Pow, popped him dead in his head. Now, watch this. All the, the Christians that believe in Jesus, why all of a sudden, he's heralded as, as a hero. Why ain't they quoting to him, he who lived by the sword should die by the sword. But when it comes to us, first of all, we don't make a living by the sword. The police does. We don't make a living by the sword. The Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and the Marines does. See, oh, boy. So if you're going to say it and quote it, you might as well quote it right, right? Just because we're carrying a weapon don't mean we're living by the sword. Do we make a living by the sword? No, we don't make no living by the sword. We don't get paid to carry the sword around. Police do. Huh? The military does. Yeah, they do. The CIA does. Isn't that amazing? See, they played all these little weak Christian mindsets on you and these little Gentile ways and stuff, and then they got you thinking that you're supposed to just take an ass whooping. Turn the other cheek. He asked me that question too. He said, ain't you supposed to turn the other cheek? I said, I will. I promise you I will. I will turn the other cheek. Really? I said, sure do. He said, somehow, someway, the way you're saying it, I say, you're pretty discerning. He said, so if somebody hits you, what are you going to do? Turn the other cheek. For real. I said, I just got finished telling you I would turn the other cheek. Then he said, well, how, why is it that I just can't get this? Something's going on. I don't believe that you really believe turn the other cheek. Yes, I do. Then I just say, I'll turn the other cheek. If somebody hit you, what are you going to do? Turn the other cheek. See, the problem is understanding. That's the problem. The problem is understanding. Mind you, this is the same Jesus that went inside the temple, got so mad at him, got a whip, and started turning over tables and beating their ass. Jesus bought strapping up to a whole new level. <laughs> Mind you, create the universe. Think about that for a second. I said, man, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you what turn other cheek means. You hit me, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that, that you ain't going to have a cheek on your face no more. That's turn other cheek. Well, it means turn away. No, when it's speaking about in that area right there, if there's an offense that is going on between you and That's when you turn the other cheek. You try to always, because we're supposed to have fervent charity among ourselves, so you're supposed to always try to make sure you're resolving issues. <laughs> among brothers. Among brothers. But if they ain't brethren, go to their ass. That's how you do it. Isn't that good? See, this don't fit Kenneth K. Copeland and Benny Hinn preaching, do it. You think TDJ's going to talk like this? I bet your daddy don't talk like this. Your daddy don't think you done lost your mind. Where's Alan at? He another PK. Hey, would your daddy listen to you too? No? What's wrong? Don't, don't they know y'all know the book? Don't care, don't do it. You a PK child? Hey, when's the last time you talked to your dad? Years. Come here, PK child. This is bad right here. Isn't it? See, people come here and they learn how to be men. Isn't that something? An Israelite. They learn how to be an Israelite. See, that's the reason why his dad don't want to probably talk to him. Look at him. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Look at him. Like, what the? 
See, we live in a redneck town. And, and this redneck town, they hate y'all white people more than us black people. Because y'all associated with us. And I've told them plenty of times, I said, I guarantee ain't nobody up here going to make no mistake but trying to come in our church and shoot up nobody. <laughs> huh? You'll have a make our day moment in that one. You ever seen spaghetti? Swiss cheese? And we ain't going to miss either. See, if, if somebody look at him in a church, they'll go, what in the world is going on? Wouldn't they? He don't look like he no follower of Jesus. He look like a perfect follower of Jesus to me. You know how I use that thing? Is it loaded? It ain't loaded. It is loaded. It better be loaded. You got one in the chamber? You better have one in the chamber. You fast? You better have one in that chamber. That'll make y'all sober real quick then, wouldn't it? It was amazing because as soon as we uh, started doing live fire training up here, boy, all of a sudden everybody didn't want to go to the range no more. Thank y'all. Let me be seated. We started doing some live fire training. And of course, the only people that can go to that are the people who are actually experienced. Because you've seen on the internet, you got experienced people sitting up there in live fire and then they're doing movements and stuff and then his buddy pops up and he shoots him in the back of the head and kills him. We can't have no mistakes like that around here. Are you following me? But this is the type of world we live in. We live in a type of world now where everything is turned upside down. The thing that used to be evil has now become good. And the thing that was good has now become evil. Got a pedophile, a known pedophile, live right around the corner up here. Right around the corner up here. And he'll get more protection under the law than we would because we keep the commandments. We never had, in the 23 years we've been here, we never had one complaint on us. Not one complaint. Isn't that something? I'm talking about as far as us hurting someone. You follow me? Now I have drew my pistol on someone though. Now, I've done that. I don't miss either. Be fortunate I didn't have to use that thing. But y'all see what's going on, right? In this world, they got you fearing the government fearing all the people around you while you being taken advantage of. Now suppose all of a sudden the truck stopped running to the store and nobody can come up here and get no food. What do you think is going to happen to the people in this county? How long do you think it'll take before they have some roving mobs running from house to house taking people's goods and Jacking folks. I guarantee it would take no more than 30 days. Truck stop running, civil unrest. Police ain't coming out of the city to come out here to rescue you. They're going to stay in the city. So we've got to change everything. Every single thing. You men, you need to actually show your children. When you see something out of pocket, out of order, you show them that is disgusting. That is vile. That is against the most high y'all. And here's the law right here. Mankind should not lie with mankind as with a woman. And all they do so on abomination should be put to death. Don't let them be confused. That's reason why y'all think we homeschool our children. Because we don't want them influenced by this wicked world out here. Our, our boys look like boys and our girls look like girls. And if we ain't careful, you start getting used to this stuff and start unthawing with it. The Bible says, when he comes, shall he find. It's getting, it's getting scarce. Every year that goes by, it seems like things are getting worse. 
Y'all know that homosexuality used to be a mental disorder? In the 60s and 70s, it was literally classified as a mental disorder. Now the Supreme Court in 2015 made it all but law that same-sex people can get married. Now, you may be getting married down here, but you're still going to have to go to hell. Huh? Bruce Jenner says that he can't wait. They call him Caitlin. I call him Bruce. I know him by Bruce. He's playing tennis. He says, I can't wait to have a talk with God and ask him why. Ask him why what? Why did you make me like this? Bullshit. He didn't make you like that. That's what they do. They try to blame it on the creator. You're full of demons, full of devils. And the reason why you like that is because somebody in your generations have done toyed around with cross-dressing and acting like a woman, and that curse has done come down through the family line. See, other preachers ain't going to talk to you like that. All you got to do, somebody get this out to Bruce Jenner. I mean, uh, Caitlyn Jenner, that's what they call him, right? Look like a woman. And... We was in IHOP the other day. Me and some and Nelly and his Kyle. And all of a sudden, this thing come flamboyantly walking by. I didn't think nothing about it. Because, you know, if you're sitting down looking at me, you look up and somebody pass by, you know what I mean, put your head back down, and Summer goes, that was a man. It's the only thing I see is the backside. I see long hair, slim body. I thought it was woman. Boy, by the time that thing came out of that room and stuff, he had an Adam's apple sticking out like this. Face just as square and hard looking. <laughs> had on earrings. Had a little hair up and... I looked at him, I said, listen, his car asleep. He's still, is he up? I said, listen. I said, if we ever go out and one of them things come to this table, y'all remember me saying this? Remember me saying this? Come here, son. Oh, bring him up here with you. If we ever go out and one of them things come to this table, Or if I'm not around, basically, and y'all have to get something to eat, one of these things come to this table right here, what, what did I tell you? Let me get over here so you can speak into the mic. What did I tell you? You said we would ask for another waiter. In, isn't that cordial? Isn't that kind? Isn't that nice? They got rights, we got rights. We're patronizing your business. We don't believe in that stuff, so just send us somebody else. No big deal. And if they don't want to send nobody else, what? You ask for a manager. All right. And then what? If they don't want We to, leave. We leave. Then I come and use my vast outreach and come make a video and tell the whole world about that establishment. And watch it go viral. Because I said... He's not going to grow up confused, thinking that that's okay. Shouldn't that, ain't that the way you should be? I mean, even his cow went. I said, you're right. It don't make sense. Thank you, son. Bless y'all. Isn't that right? You don't want them little warriors to grow up confused because these little men one day are going to take our place and they're going to get married to these daughters and we have to teach them. Now we understand what the Bible means. We don't let our children go out and mingle with their children in the world. We don't let our children get married to people who are taught about a fat Santa Claus, sun, Sunday sun god worship, Easter bunnies, 
crosses and hexes and vexes and everything. No, no, no. That's one of another nation. So these little warriors, they get married to our little girls who are brought up in the fear of Yah. And then we keep on. And then we, and you have to really truly plow it into their hearts. And then teach them self-control. And listen, don't go out there and start beating up on folks just because they, they're homosexuals. They got a right, we're in captivity. They got a right in America to be that way, but not on your land and not around you. And you don't have to sit up there and be forced to accept something because they're trying to cram something down your throat. You hear about the other guy at the NFL the other day? A guy in uh, uh, number 94 from the Los Angeles Raiders. No, 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 they, they're called the uh, Las Vegas Raiders now. He come out of the closet, defensive end. He says, he says, I want you all to know I'm gay. <laughs> What would that have been like, TJ, in your day? Did, 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 people didn't make it known that they were homosexuals in the locker room, did they? No, sir. You hear that? They didn't in the military either because we would have done something about it. No, for real. We, we, you know, uh, we didn't play that stuff. Even if a bar of soap dropped in the shower, boy, you were suspect. <laughs> but these things... They cannot get it from their own because they can't produce anything, so they want to pervert our children. They want to predator on our children. They want to turn folks out that are clean and holy and righteous. Told you, we just had one out here in Kansas. This woman used to be a lesbian. We let them come to the fellowship out there in Kansas, let her come to fellowship. And that spirit is so powerful that it ended up getting one of our young virgin daughters, at least that's what she said, turned her out. Isn't that a mess? I thought she was repented and delivered, and I keep telling y'all folks, when somebody come in flaming or used to be a flamer or whatever it is, you better watch them for five years. Make sure they really convert it. And we talking about some deliverance, some prayer. I'm talking about some serious deliverance. You know, we're a, vibe, we're a real deliverance ministry. You get it? Now here she is, done turned out. And you know how many times she done tried to kill herself? All for being turned out. Now they having issues and troubles and problems. No duh. Isn't that amazing? So y'all better make sure, mamas, you teach them daughters, that you Boy, you love boy. No girl. <laughs> Make it plain. Because if we don't, if we don't stand on this, there ain't gonna be no hope. Now they got homosexual Bibles out with rainbows on them. They got women up in the church preaching it. They got in a Methodist church, they got they got gays, openly homosexual gays preaching to the, the congregation. And they feel good. Remember I told you, one of them said, well, we're going to come to your church. I said, no, you ain't either. Yeah, 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 can't do it. If you don't let us in, we'll get the government on you to hell with the damn government. The government ain't going to help you here because they're going to get the same thing you get. This is private property. This ain't no 501c3. We can, that's how I can talk the way I talk. I ain't got no gag order put on me. You know what I mean? No 501c3, they can't say what they want to say. They can't live, they can't do that. They, they, they don't have liberty and freedom. We have liberty and freedom. Ain't you bring your faggot ass over here, it's going to be ugly. Now, we, we're not anti-homosexual. If a homosexual want to come in here and sit down with service and stuff, good, you sit down. 
but we're going to question you real close before you get here. We got a security team out there. We're going to question you real good. Make sure your motive and your intent is right. You know what we need to do, sisters? We need to set up a table called alternative. Just in case people are confused, we can let them sit by themselves. That way we won't be accused of not, well, we can't be accused of being antisocial. We're just going to watch you. I don't feel love. You ain't never been loved. How you know what love is? Huh? And every single time. And of course, the reason why I'm talking about this is because I had another homosexual uh, uh, so-called give me some words, and I know you tuned in this morning. Isn't that amazing? It's an abomination, and you will burn for eternity for it. Male and female. Y'all didn't make Eve and Jane. Adam and Steve. You cannot get nothing out of that. So make sure the children are not confused. Y'all good? Make sure them little warriors are not confused. Even if you even if you see them all of a sudden make a gesture the wrong way, correct it. You never know if that's a spirit could be trying to come up. That's right. Glory to the king. Isn't that all right? Brina, don't you want to get married one day? Sure. See, she ain't going to make the same mistake that Nadia made. See, she, she ain't going to make the same mistake that Nadia made. And I'm getting my $5, too, one way or the other. I'm getting my $5. Hallelujah. Y'all all right? Everybody doing well? All right, correct talk and correct speaking. Knowing how to talk to Yah. Knowing how to talk to Yah. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Let me see. There's brash, there's brazen, bold, obnoxious, rude, all the things they levy against me. It's amazing how that people come from all over the world to get healed, delivered, and set free, though, isn't it? They come to this brass, brazen, Rude, obnoxious preacher. Isn't that amazing? But yet they preachers can't produce a fart in a whirlwind. Can't do nothing. Isn't that amazing? It's crazy, isn't it? We're going to find out who y'all really is for there, right? Listen, if you of y'all, you're going to have power. Did you hear me? Everybody is different in the body. Everybody is not a preacher. Everybody sure ain't a security guard. Everybody ain't the head. Everybody's not the, the only, there's only one head, Yahshua, right? Hmm? We could be a finger in the body or a toe or a knee or elbow or an ankle. You could be anything in the body, but we need the body. You know, I mean, do you, you probably could do without your index finger. You probably could still live, couldn't you? You wouldn't like it, but you would like to live with it, though, right? I would like to live with it. You know what I mean? But you could still function, all right? But you know how much if your body would be hindered if just that one index finger was gone? You wouldn't believe how important that one index finger is until it's gone. Are you following me? Anybody here ever had a toothache before? Wow, man. That stuff, when that, when that hurts, the whole body hurts, don't it? Makes you miserable, don't it? It sends you down through that, don't it? Huh? Anybody ever had an abscess? Ooh, boy, that tears you up. That's even worse. Huh? Man, when that hurts, the whole body hurts. And the best thing to do is get that thing out. Isn't that right? You don't know? You ain't never had an abscess? What have you had? Here comes JC. Here comes JC. Here comes JC now. You ain't never had a, you never had a cavity? Me neither. I didn't have a cavity until I was like 48 years old, something like that. So it can be done. Oh, it can be done. My little girl didn't have a cavity until she's like 50. It can be done. You ever had a toothache? So you can't relate to what we're talking to then. You just divine. <laughs> 
Hey, no, sir, no, sir. <laughs> so you're just going to have to take the testimony of us peasants and everything who don't, who don't, who don't know any better, man. We just, you know, we just a finished people. You're just going to have to believe us. It hurts. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we are people of power because of the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of us. All right? And so it's never, ever, ever, you're never going to stop hearing me talking about appropriating the power of the Holy Spirit because sometimes you know what we do, right? We get at ease in time. We get lax in here because we get comfortable about being Israel and we're keeping the commandments and, 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 and we know the word and we know the word around each other. And, and then before long, everybody has so much deliverance. All of a sudden now we don't need no deliverance. We don't need, you know, we do, you see what I mean? Isn't that right? We don't stay on the cutting edge. Knowing the whole time, as soon as he, you become really easy, the devil is already working on something. Now, ain't the devil real? Oh, you know how real he is. So anyway, it, so it'll benefit and behoove us to know how to speak to Yah. The anointing mixed with faith will heal you. Now, watch this. How many people had the have been filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit before you got here. All right, see all that? That's a lot of people. How many people were filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit before you knew this ministry? It gets less and less. You see what I mean? Now watch this. When you get around y'all's people, does not the anointing increase? And that's something. So when you're around y'all's people, you actually strengthen each other. When you're away from y'all's people, your strength becomes small. It gets diminished, isn't it? Why? Because it's contagious. All right? And guess what? When that anointing is contagious like that, and when you're around y'all's people and it's continually to increase, then guess what? Your faith increases. That means we're better helpers to each other. Is that right? Better helpers to each other. So, now, y'all heard me say this. I have failed more times than many of you have ever tried. Believe it or not, I actually pulled this from an old message right here. I was actually getting ready to go down another road and then all of a sudden detour. And you know, I'm an obedient servant. No, I'm just a servant, man. Be sober. Watch. Because you're... Do you actually believe you have an adversary? Your adversary, the who? As a what? Walking about seeking whom he may devour. As a roaring lion. Now notice, the majority of the time, lions usually roar when they fool. You don't see no lion getting ready to come up on some prey. Roar! <laughs> I, I, I better bring it out. <laughs> you don't do that. People say, what are you talking about? For real. All right. Adversary, the word diakonos, I remember some time ago we went over the courts of heaven, right? So an adversary is someone as opposing you in a lawsuit. That's what the Greek means in that word adversary. So there's a courtroom that is up in Shemaim all the time that's going on. And of course we bring it out like the book of Job. Y'all heard Job, right? And you mind you, if we never even had the book of Job, how in the world we would have known what was going on in the heavenlies? Here's Job minding his own business, and all of a sudden all this chaos and hell just ensues, and all this death and all this carnage, and he starts losing wealth, and what in the world? But then Job, the book actually lets us peer into what's going on. Now think about this for a second. Who would have ever thought in your righteous little mind that the Most High Yah would be talking to the devil. I guarantee they won't preach that in Christianity. Satan comes on up. Y'all says, hey, where you coming from, Satan? Oh, to and fro, up and down the earth. Oh, for real? Yeah. What you up to? Oh, you know, causing people to sin against you. You know what I mean? Hell, chaos, death, you know, my same standard operating procedure as usual. He said, hey, I got something for you. What? You consider my servant Job? Notice, who picked that fight? Who picked that fight?
Oh, yeah, I thought about him, but you got a head so big, can't nothing touch him. Oh, yeah, that he was right. Yeah, he loves me. Yeah, I know. I do got a big old protect, hedge of protection around. So guess what? That means if the devil is not bothering you, chances are there's a hedge of protection around you. <laughs> However, if all hell all of a sudden start breaking loose, that means you being t- tried, you being tested. Watch this. With permission from the Most High. You know how many times I keep telling you, and a lot of times we keep failing tests, and then they keep revisiting. And every time we fail, the test comes back again. And I keep saying, when are y'all going to get this? When are you going to wake up to this that, that this is ordained by y'all? What, all this hell? Yeah! I mean, he says, you try spirits, you try brethren, you prove the commandments, you test him, you try him. Yes, he does. But all of a sudden, he's, he's supposed to try you. You got a testimony to say you love y'all, don't you? Well, he's going to test that both then. A lot of people boast. Oh, I love y'all. Oh, you do. Oh, okay. Y'all said, well, I heard that testimony. Boy, we're going to put that to the test. Now, wait a minute. In your previous little mindset, you would have thought, y'all would never allow no test like that to come. Yeah, he would too. He did it with Job. Job was a whole lot more righteous than all of us. He was righteous. We wicked. Compared to Job, Job was, man, he was the cream of the crop. Satan left Shemaim, started causing all his hell. Job didn't even charge Yah. Fell before his faith, and the more he prayed, the more hell ensued. Isn't that something? Isn't that nice that the Most High gave us the book of Job? The book of Job, so we can look into this and see this. Isn't that beautiful? That's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Now, because we haven't had that book of Job, now we know what the world is going on even more so. So there's a court. Remember, Yahshua said that he is a mediator. Is that right? Of a better covenant. Is that right? And he also said that he ever lives and make intercession for us. So that means now, on the other side of Job, that now, as before, when we had to go through that and stuff, now we have a mediator in place. So when the accuser come to accuse, guess who's standing right there? Who's standing right there on your behalf if you are a born-again Israelite? Isn't that nice to know it now? I bet Job would have loved to have that. See what I mean? Look what we have at our access. That's why, you know, whenever you have a case, even in natural law, you just don't go talk straight to the judge. You talk to your attorney. An attorneyator, the attorneyator. The attorney, the attorney goes speaks to the judge. Isn't that right? Because they they already tell us we too incompetent. We don't know how to talk. And we don't know how to talk their language. Oh, you follow me? Now I'm, I'm telling you right now, don't go out and get an attorney, that's when you're gonna go to jail. You'd be better off representing yourself, and that way you go to jail honestly. (laughs) But anyway, so the attorney, he's up here talking to this judge because they know how to talk to each other. So when Yahshua is talking to the father, he already knows how to talk to him because he knows you don't know how to talk. And you know the best way to talk to Yahshua? With groanings and moanings which can't be uttered and that heavenly language that he has given you and uh, that even if you don't understand but your spirit understands. But your understanding is unfruitful. Your spirit does the praying. See a lot of times we are lost for words and stuff then don't have no words. Let, let the heavenly language or the spirit man ensue and let him do the talking for you. Because, I mean, what does it say in 1 Corinthians? If I pray in an unknown tongue, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. 
So a lot of times, you know you need to pray. You don't even know what to pray for, but you know you press to pray. So why don't you just let your spirit man pray? Isn't that beautiful? Just speak in tongues. And then when you get up, you'll find out, boy, it, I, I felt like I knew what I was talking about. And you didn't know nothing. But you sure feel good. Hallelujah. So an adversary is someone that opposes you in a lawsuit. Now, Luke 13, 10 says, and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Isn't that something? The seventh day, the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had, what did she have? So did she have an infirmity or did she have a? Did y'all hear that? She had a spirit of what? 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, y'all heard about their testimony when I was down in uh, Dallas. Was that Dallas? That that brother, that, that came a young brother, he's like 30-something years old. Brother Jeff, he was bent all over and stuff, looked like the hunchback of Notre Dame. I laid my hands on his back, straighten up, boom, just like that. He's about to, just like that. Now see, that wasn't Pastor Dow doing that. That was the real Jesus. That was the greater is he that is in you than he that is. That was Jesus doing that. Are y'all getting that? So, look what he said. And he saw her and he called her and he said unto her, Woman, you are loosed from your what? Infirmity. Notice, he didn't go get a, a bag of plantain. And put it on the back. <laughs> I'll just shoot a shot at him. Don't tell nobody doing it. A lot of people don't know when I'm doing it, though, you know. I'm a sniper, man. So healing is a covenant right. How do we know that? Loosed, loosed to be free, to relieve, release, dismiss, let die, pardon. Notice, loose means he's what? Pardon? You remember what the scribes and Pharisees had an issue with Yahshua? Say, who can forgive sins but Yah only? Are you following me? So when he says, woman, you are loose, that's the translation we're reading, but he's really had pardoned her from some infraction or some previous sin that was in her life so that he could have access to her and then heal her. So woman, thou are loose, depart, divorce, dismiss, loose, let go, release, or what? Set at liberty. Y'all get this? And then, here it is. Covenant. Remember a covenant relationship? And ought not this woman being a daughter of? Covenant relationship. Family. You see what I mean? She's a daughter of Abraham. Whom, who am bound? Satan is bound. Look at this. Lo, these 18 years be loose from the, this bond and on the what? Sabbath day. Now, is not envy as rottenness to the bone? The first thing every time I see people who have any type of bone trouble, the first thing you need to check is what? Envy. Some type of envy or bitterness in you or in the family. Start there first. But you know how we justify ourselves. Have you ever, any, who's ever done the yellow pad thing where you wrote down you on this side and everybody else on this side and then you wrote down all the things you've done bad to people, and then all the bad things people come done to you. It's pretty disproportionate, isn't it? Your side about like this, and their side's like this. See, when you're blinded to yourself, there's a reason why you can't get better, because you can't repent properly. Uh-oh. But yet and still, your infirmity is still there. Showing you that you've missed a mark somewhere. You get that? He loosed her from a debt that was old. And when you are bound, that is true. A true sign that you are in debt. So let me pound this some more. Revelation 12, 10 says, And I heard a loud voice from heaven, in heaven, Now has come to salvation and strength in the kingdom of Yah and the power of the Messiah. For the of the is cast down, which accused them before who? Before who? Before who? 
So you mean to tell me the same thing that is still that was going on with Job is still going on with us? And how often does he do it? Day and night. Look at this. Against one in assembly, that is a complaint in the law. Satan the accuser, meaning one against you in an assembly, a complaint at law. So he's got a lawsuit against you. He's got a case against you. Understanding, overstanding. Discern Israel, when people have no understanding, do not concern yourself with them because you're going to be wasting your time. Yah is not dealing with them because they are not either in or under the Abrahamic covenant. Who do y'all make the covenant with? Abraham and his seed, his descendants, right? Eviction. Anybody, you ever seen eviction before? It's going on a lot in America nowadays. All right? You know what a trespasser is too, right? All right? A trespasser has no legal or lawful rights. That doesn't stop them from trespassing, though. Did y'all hear that? They don't have no legal or lawful rights, but it doesn't stop them from trespassing. All right? No court is needed. We can simply take the anointing and the authority of the Spirit of Yah we have and kick him out, and then healing comes. So when a spirit is trespassing on you, you don't need no permission. You just exercise the authority that Yahshua has already given you. The hardest thing to do is get you to open up your mouth and to actually do it. In meetings, you will see a lot of people get touched by the Ruach and still not be healed. I see it all the time. Why? The enemy has some type of what? Legal grounds or what? Legal rights. Now, the Ruach, which is the Holy Spirit, listen very closely to what's being said right here. He that despised Moses' law died without what? Under two or three what? Of how much sore punishment me, suppose ye that shall be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the Son of Yah and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and have done despite or insult to the what? Spirit of grace. In other words, the Spirit of Yah can be insulted by you who say that you are of Yah. Today, the greatest insult is the complete, total ignoring of him. Have you ever noticed how the Holy Spirit is mentioned very little in the day and time and hour we're living in now? Who talks about the Holy Spirit? You see what I mean? But yet and still, did not Yahshua said that he had to go away to the Father to send a comforter? Isn't that right? And he's supposed to lead us, teach us, guide us into all truth. Isn't that right? Isn't he also the one that was responsible for the power? Huh? Y'all read about this in John 14, 26, John 15, 26, and Acts 1, 8. So when you get finished with all of the religious arguments, the bottom line still stands. Religious people have no power, just words. Wouldn't it be nice if they could have a missionary Baptist convention up here and invite me to preach? You know the first thing I do, right? A mass deliverance. They wouldn't even know what was going on. I know how to do that. Who's ever been around and seen me in the middle of a sermon preaching and stuff, and all of a sudden I'll just start doing a little deliverance, and next thing you know, all chaos just breaks loose? Raise your hand if you've seen that before. Boy, it's something to see, isn't it? So look how powerful words are if they're used the right way. It's letting you know how much attention that the spirit realm really truly pays attention to. Are you following? Because when you have authority, spiritual authority, and you have it, when you do have it and you learn how to talk the right way, learn how to talk to y'all the right way, they have no choice but to respond. They have to respond because why? Yahshua has placed them under our feet. He said, I've given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's what he said, right? But what good is it to be loaded with power and you don't never turn on the source? What good is it to have it and you never use it? You just walk around as just a power plant. Are you following me? I mean, after all, um, 
They didn't have lithium batteries. I mean, don't, isn't it quite, it should, I think it's commonly understood, is it right, Brother Bud, that if you have a lithium battery, it holds a charge? And how, and so, but if you use a regular old car battery and stuff like that, um, it'll, over a period of time, it will lose charge, right? Is that right? So, a lithium battery holds a charge, but it won't hold it forever, though, will it? It eventually will go out. Are you following me? So what would happen to you if you're filled with the Holy Spirit and yet you don't recharge yourself and the power of it? See, because the way you recharge a battery in this or recharge you, which is the power plant of the Holy Spirit, is by speaking in tongues. Is that the reason why we're running so low on power? Oh. Are y'all hearing me? And then you get down to just words. Now you can tell whose words are powerless because they're not backed up by the meaning that the Holy, the Holy Spirit can give. Is that making sense? All right. Anybody ever use these delivery services before? Sometime, how many days does it take or uh, even weeks for you to receive orders? It does, though, don't it? Huh? Getting still at the time of payment. You own those items, don't you? You just hadn't received it yet. Isn't that right? You ever pay for something and then you wait for it to come? Huh? You don't sit and complain for a couple of days until it get here, do you? Anybody hear me? Huh? You ever ask y'all for something and, and, and do you wait for it to come? Uh-oh. He got a delivery service too. Sometimes it don't run, run as fast as FedEx. I, I, I'm sorry, his, his service ain't it, it ain't faster than, than 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 UPS. Sometimes his service is a little slow. Uh -oh. But what I'm telling you is, the Bible says that the day that Daniel prayed. He did what? He received it, didn't he? Now didn't Yahshua say it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom? Didn't he say that? So when you ask for something, you patiently wait for it until it comes. Is that right? Now y'all don't work like regular delivery services around here. They're not gonna, he's not going to send you an email and tell you it's two days out. He's not going to have the Holy Spirit to call up your conscience and tell you it'll be here in 30 minutes. <laughs> you hear me? What y'all have to do is just be ready to receive when it comes. Have you ever ordered something and it came earlier than what you thought. But yet and still you patiently wait on it. But when it came early, you didn't complain that it came early, didn't you? Because when you ordered it, when it finally got there, it got to your own time, though, didn't it? Even though it was early, it got there on time, didn't it? What if it gets there a little late? Is it still on time? I mean, y'all could be testing your patience. Uh-oh. You ever seen them before? That's what my porch look like all the time because y'all won't stop ordering nothing. They just figured I'm the first house down at the bottom. Look at all these houses up here. There's one, two right here. There's a place right here. But they just figured I just dump them all right here. So, y'all sure Jesus, he paid for our sins on a what? On a tree. Is that right? He paid, he paid, he paid, he paid for our sins. And see, when he paid for those sins, he had already promised to send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. And when he got to you, he got there right on time, didn't he? Yeah. Didn't he get there right on time, didn't he? Huh? 
So remember these days, O Jacob of Israel, you are my servant. I have formed you, and you are my servant, O Israel. You shall not be forgotten of me. Sometimes don't you feel in meaningless? Don't you feel inadequate? Don't you feel like, man, in the grand scheme of things in all the universe that y'all has to run and stuff, I'm just a little small drop in a bucket. Huh? But yet and still, y'all said, you, O Israel, you will never be forgotten of me. Now, you think about this for a second, though. When you walk in knowing that you will never be forgotten, and as a child would always go to his father, wouldn't you be happy to go to the father? Huh? I mean, we got a father so good. I mean, you can ask him for a piece of fish, he won't give you a scorpion. You can ask for a piece of bread, he won't give you a stone. Isn't that right? But see, you got to know that you know that you know that you know that you know. And this is not mental assent. This is something you know because of the gift that has already been delivered to you. Y'all hearing this? When the gift finally gets to you, then you'll learn how to talk to the Father even the more so. Okay. I'm going to plow a little bit more, okay? He said, I have blotted out as a thick cloud your what? Transgressions. Hey, get Jeremiah 33, verse 6 real quick, teacher. Your, I have blotted out as a thick cloud your transgressions, and as a cloud your sins return unto me, for I have redeemed you. I have redeemed you. <laughs> that was Isaiah 44, 22, Isaiah 53, 3. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows acquainted with what? Now wait a minute. Messiah, is a, he was a man of sorrows and acquainted with what? Now don't that same one say, cast all your cares on me for he cared for you? So my question is, even when you're feeling heavy and all this stuff, why would you carry around all this stuff when he's already giving you the instructions to lay it all at my feet, to put it all down on top of me? Well, I feel, I feel. Since when did your feelings become reality? I mean, again, you feel it. You're in the here and the now, right? But you're feeling it based on external mess that is going on. How about just feel out to him a little more? How about press on in to feel him? Somebody say, oh, past, they just sound like motivational preaching. No, this is called faith preaching. It's called ever-increasing faith. It's called living by the principle so that when you do talk to Yah, you can get an answer. Whoever asked Yah for a million dollars? Y'all ain't never asked Yah for a million dollars? Man, I ain't talking about being born again. Look at you, all spiritual on me now. You ain't never asked Yah for a million dollars. Who's ever bought a lottery ticket? Raise your hand. Well, damn, you asked y'all for a million dollars then, didn't you? All you spiritual people in here. What you get the lottery ticket for? Hoping to get a million dollars then, what? Never mind. Boy, you people something else, boy. You see the dang IT we got to pull in here? Oh, I ain't never asked for a million dollars, but I'm wish. And then, if you're really spiritual, when you bought that lottery ticket, you said, the Bible son does say, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper. So as soon as my soul receives this money, I'm going to be in good health. You got to flip that script and change that. <laughs> but y'all got to hear what the Spirit is saying, though. Y'all hear me? I'm telling you, we do not spend enough time Y'all ready for this one? Encouraging ourselves. We spend a whole lot of time down on ourselves, but we don't spend enough time encouraging ourselves. I mean, don't the Bible say, think yourself happy? You ever tried it before? Look, look at them. Very few people. You ain't even trying to think yourself happy.
Anybody, does anybody know what it feels like to be heavy? Yeah. Downcast? Yeah. Does it, you, you, it don't feel too good, don't it? Feel like a bunch of bricks and weights on you, don't it? Don't it? Wouldn't it be nice? If, I mean, I, I love to see what one looks like, but I know what it looks like. I can tell you what it looks like when I see it in action. That's why y'all says, put on the garment of praise. Put, it, put on the garment of praise. You see, that's the best time in the world of praise is when you don't feel like it. Because your flesh showing itself alive. Yeah, nah, praise. Look how foolish and stupid you are. Well, look how foolish and stupid you are. You stay there. Oh, man. I tell you what, man. I tell you what, the next time you get heavy and you don't feel like praising, do it anyway, see what happens. Do it anyway, see what happens. Because remember, y'all don't, he don't think like man thinks. The wisdom of men is, is foolishness with y'all. And it seems like everything that y'all ask us to do is foolishness to this world. Yet it still it works though, don't it? Uh-oh. Think about that. The solution was already in Isaiah. Anybody ever been heavy before? Do you really truly feel like praising when you're heavy? I mean, the world got a solution for it. They go put you on pills. They make you even feel more down. You're already low and they take you lower. So it doesn't seem right, but it is right. Are you following me? It is right. Now watch this. Everything I'm talking about, it comes with a responsibility. It's all predicated upon you being a good servant like Job was. You need to be that way so that you can always have access to the kingdom. So Yahshua was a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. We hid as I were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our what? Griefs, which is diseases, and carried our sorrows, which is what? Pains. Yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of Yah and afflicted. But he was wounded for our what? He was wounded for our what? Read, read uh, Jeremiah 33 verse 6 teach. Behold. I will bring it health and cure, and I will cure them, and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. Y'all hear that? Now, all this before he gets there is him also forgiving us of our transgressions and our sins and our iniquities. And it continues to be a theme throughout the whole entire book. And he was bruised for our iniquities, chastised his pieces upon him, and with his stripes we are what? And with his stripes we are what? And with his stripes we are what? Healed. Sometimes you need to declare that by his stripes, I am healed. Because you know why? Your flesh don't want to say it. Your flesh wants you to believe what it feels. Flesh don't want to be in faith. Flesh loves unbelief. All we have like sheep gone astray and we have turned everyone his own way and have laid, and y'all have laid the iniquity of him upon us all. Now, the Holy Spirit is y'all's delivery system. The major problem we have in this generation is we do not have the respect and honor and reverence for him. Who was here, I think it was last, I think, I think it was last tabernacle, it was either this last tabernacle or tabernacle before last. And I was doing the service, and I said, um, I said, isn't that something? How many of y'all want to really truly feel the Holy Spirit in this place? And then all of a sudden, I start calling on the Holy Spirit to start moving in this place. I said, you ain't got to, don't worry about it. You ain't got to sit there and do nothing. Just watch this. So I started inviting the Holy Spirit, come on in this place right here and start touching people. And then all of a sudden, it started making quite a few people scared to death. Because they could feel his presence move all of a sudden across it. And then with some people, when they feel him, all of a sudden, they, 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 just, they can't help but go, hey, hey, oh, hallelujah. You know what I mean? All I was doing was just showing you how easy it is when there's an environment conducive for him. 
when he comes in, that means the spirit of Yah is present to heal. Was anybody here during that? Somebody had to be here and remember that. Look at all these hands. But see, if you really truly ain't in good relationship with him, it's going to do one of two things. Number one, it's either going to terrify you or it's going to tell you, I better get back to my relationship with the king. You see what I mean? Staying close to him. To be also ready so when he does come, you don't miss your day of visitation. Hallelujah. We forget that the Ruach is Yah. Jesus instructed us how we should do after he went to the Father. The Holy Spirit is here now to reveal and manifest Yahshua. John 16, 13 says, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. Now listen to me. Are y'all not excited with all this truth y'all been able to come into? But yet and still in this excitement, you forgot that the world killed the truth. His people and the Romans, they killed the truth. Now y'all see what's going on? The servant is no different from the, the master. You come to all this truth, now you understand the reason why your natural family hates you and despises you. They killed him, they're going to kill you. See, they kill you through angry and ugliness and and everything they expect out of you, they can't even produce themselves. Isn't that sad? So you end up being despised, rejected, and hated because the Messiah was despised, rejected, and hated. So don't think it is some strange thing that's done come up on you. The servant is not greater than his master. If they despise him, they're going to despise you. Now, you ever notice, any, anybody, any, any, any man in here ever just been a whole monger before? You're just a whole monger. You ain't got to go and blast out all your history and stuff, but you, just, you know you was a whole monger. And guess what? Your family loved you. Didn't they? Huh? Anybody was ever rebellious in your family? Anybody was ever rebellious? And yet and still your family tolerated you and put up with you. They loved you, didn't they? Didn't they do it? Didn't they do it? And they, oh boy, everything that the world would have you to be, your family has the patience and tolerate, they can tolerate everything you were. But when you come to truth, all of a sudden that fuse is short. Extremely short. Y'all see what's going on now? This is a spiritual walk. And now they can't even lay sin to your charge. Are you following me? Can't do it no more. Even if somebody try to go and dig up your bones and stuff, it still doesn't phase you, does it? You know them old skeletons? Anybody try to dig them up, you laugh at them. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? I'm waiting for somebody to say, well, I know. I, I, you know what, let me say. I hope that somebody... When, when I was growing up, I wish that somebody would be able to come here to tell y'all about me when I was younger. I was a pretty good boy. Hmm? I was. I was actually a pretty good boy. Was I a pretty good boy, Carol? See? I was a model citizen. I want one of them offended girlfriends to come and tell me. You know, they got a list, boy. They got a bucket list. I want one of them to come and tell me. You know the reason why? Then I look and laugh going, man, shoot, you think that's something, boy. I can tell you more than that. You get it? In other words, just when somebody think they can dig up a skeleton, dead bones, are you following me? Uh, you should be able to laugh at that. Because didn't y'all turn around and declare that these bones shall live? Didn't y'all spirit come up on you while you were yet dead in your sins? And you're not quickening you and making you alive? You're no longer that person no more, are you? Hallelujah. That's how we can walk around with our chest stuck out. Now, don't be doing it in pride now, you know what I mean? Because the devil, when he has, listen, there's no condemnation to them who are in Messiah, to them who are in Yahshua HaMashiach. 
Why? Because they no longer walk after the flesh, but after the what? Spirit. That's why can't nobody condemn me. Does that make sense? How bear the spirit of truth? He will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. The Holy Spirit never speaks of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me, Jesus, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. So the purpose of the Holy Spirit is to glorify Jesus. Is that right? Regardless of what vain religious people say, when you magnify Jesus, when you praise him, when you glorify Jesus, the spirit of Yah will come. You know the reason why he will come? Because Yah inhabits the praises of his saints. In other words, I know it's hard for you to believe this, but it's just a flat out truth. You can be in your home, in your own bedroom, or you could be in the living room, ain't nobody there, or you could be rolling down the road, or you could pull over on the side of the road, or be in the park. The one thing that Yah cannot resist is showing up whenever he's praised. And where's the word at? Nigh thee even in your So when the release coming? Huh? When is the release coming? I mean, the whole world has gone mad, but we don't have to be part of the madness. Hallelujah. That's what we feel in this place. To those who are not familiar with him, it's a very scary thing because they do not know him, but we do. We can feel the Ruach. So people can call upon all the names they want. And how many times you see on the internet, everybody, they, they come up with a new name every week now. And yet and still, no power. None whatsoever at all. Well, we'll always see if heaven answers. So when the Holy Spirit comes, this is the rivers of the living waters flowing among us. But you have to understand, you can't live a life grieving the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is no fool. He can come right into a place and he knows everything there is to know about us. And now you understand the reason why some he touches, some he don't, because there's something being hid that's very open to him. Remember, he knows the courts of heaven. He knows what's going on down here. He knows the hearts of all men. Are you following me? And he discerns very well, but remember, it's always the Father's will to heal, and it's always the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It really is. So this is just not something we're just conjuring up in the spirit of our mind through knowledge. This is the reality of the thing. The major problem today is flat out ignorance. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brother, I would not have you ignorant. Notice the claim is not to have you to be what? Ignorant. If they claim to be teachers of this law or the book of this law, and yet they do not have any power then they are none of his according to the word. I just was flipping. You know how sometimes you cut on YouTube and then all of a sudden there's this little, I, you know, these little captions. I click on this, I go, that looks like a modest woman. I click on it and I go, dang, that woman more masculine than a man. And then I knew the reason why she was masculine as a man. You know how I know that? Can a woman be a prophet? Yet she called herself a prophet. This is how spiritual they are. And not only that, not only did she call herself a prophet, man, she got a bucket list of callings. Prophet, apostle, overseer, teacher, evangelist. I mean, she got a whole bunch of them. So she's a man woman. That's confusion, isn't it? Bad, isn't it? And if I was to let you hear her, you will hear a man spirit. Even though she sounds like a female, you will literally hear a man speaking through her. Masculine spirit, masculine gestures. Out of order. All right. Then there are none of you. So today we have the same modern day Pharisees as they had back then. And when they went forth, he preached everywhere. Jesus working with them, confirming a the word with what? 
Confirming the word with what? Hey, TJ got a question, man. You got any sick folk in your family? Yeah, I got a bunch of them. Just call them up and ask them, would you like to be healed? That'll put you on the spot, wouldn't it? Huh? Oh, you ain't got to worry about it that, because they already done kill the truth in you. They don't want nothing to do with you. You're just making it available. They ain't going to want to be healed. I told you, um, I, Yahshua had already healed a couple of people by me laying hands on them, and I got to this one person right here, and he says, no, I don't want to be healed. Why? Because I'm, I may stop receiving my disability. Y'all remember me telling y'all that story? They say they don't want to be healed because they, they're afraid they may lose their disability check. That's bad. Would you rather have a $5,000 a month disability check or be healed? I mean, if they're giving out $5,000, I don't know. $5,000 seems like a lot of money. That's $60,000 a year. I don't know. California just got finished saying they're going to start giving their citizens free, free, free money every month. Y'all think I'm kidding? Who saw that on YouTube? Now, for real, California said they're literally going to give checks to their citizens every month. And I've been, mind you, I've been telling y'all get out of California. Now, some of y'all consider to move back now, ain't you? <laughs> so, the more that we reverence the Ruach and respect him, the more he will manifest in our lives. Now, Acts 10 38 says how he anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power and went about doing good and healing all oppressed of the devil for Yah was with him. Acts 1 8 says, but you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. So you do know that now we're in the uttermost parts of the earth. Y'all get that, right? That was in a known world now. Now we, we done, he done scattered this thing well apart. Are you following? But when he returned to Galilee, he returned in the power of the Spirit. When Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Uh oh, uh oh. I'm jumping to verse 14, all right? Four, uh, 14. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit from, uh, into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. Now, mind you, y'all remember when Yahshua went into the wilderness? He went into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Is that right? But notice, when he came out of that wilderness and out of all that temptation, he was full of power. So you come out on the other side of temptation, where are you supposed to be? Anytime you get a victory over the enemy, where are you supposed to be? Now, you know, I'm going to ask the other question. Why ain't we full of power? Uh-oh. Y'all, I'm going to tell y'all, y'all already know this. Y'all know the answer, right? The cares of this world, the cares of this life, and the lust of other things. It chokes out the power of y'all. Yeah. Your mind's in the wrong place. And he had some alone time fasting in solitude with the Father. Fasting is good for you. Yes, it is. Yes, it is too. It's definitely good for the spirit man. And my speech and my preaching was not the enticing words of man's wisdom, but in a demonstration of the what? Spirit and power and of power. So we read throughout all the renewed covenant, power, 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 spirit, power, spirit, power, spirit, power. Power, spirit, spirit, power, power, spirit, spirit, power. And yet and still we don't see too much of it today. Mainly amongst us Israelites. There's a lot of people out there handling the word. But there's a lot of people that do not have the real Jesus. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the what? Power of Yah. In the power of Yah. In the power of Yah. I mean, you think about this. Um, what was the last place I went to? Jacksonville. Is that right? Dallas. Atlanta. DMV. 
Is that right? That was last year, right? Huh? Didn't some of y'all go to some of those places? Y'all don't see me behave the same way out there than I do here, do you? Because this is the teaching ground. All right? You see a lot of it during the feast days. But what I do, I usually declare that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Y'all see it, right? And then immediately after declaring that, the first thing I do is after I get finished preaching and stuff, is start demonstrating the declaration of that kingdom. Of that kingdom. Is that right? Is that right? So that your wisdom does not stand in men, but in the what? Power of Yah. So I'm up here talking all this stuff, making my boast in Yah, making my boast in Yahshua. And when I get finished doing all that, and yet and still you don't see the power of Yah, then those words were nothing. They didn't mean anything. Does that make sense? It ain't making any sense. Does that make sense? For those of you that have been out there, and then those of you who have seen it, y'all seen it. I mean, think about this. Is that not some bold declarations I make when I'm out there? Is that not something? Is that not something? I'll flat out tell you. You come up here, you'll get healed. Flat out. And it happens. I sit there. Y'all know Ranger Buddy, right? Brother Gideon, right? You know, he's always following me around with security, right? And he sat up there and watched his leg grow out. He couldn't even hold his composure. He said, oh, shit. <laughs> Can you believe that? Will that not make you move if you've never seen nothing like that before in your life? That the medical profession can't even handle? By the way, I keep talking about it. Where's Marseille? You still jumping rope? Did you quit jumping rope? Did she quit jumping rope? She still jumping rope. Not as much she should be. <laughs> oh, okay, so you done took a siesta. Huh? You what? Burpees? That, that's something, man. You go from walking like a pimp. Y'all ain't never seen them folks in the 70s. Y'all ain't never seen it before. <laughs> I know y'all young audience, but anybody, anybody remember the 70s? Y'all remember that walk? Some of y'all ain't never seen it before, hey. Y'all y'all seen it in the movies. That's, right. That's how y'all transcend time, the movies, right? Okay, I get it. <laughs> Go from walking like that jumping rope, now she's doing burpees. Isn't that amazing? Y'all remember brother um, Jonathan's daughter down in Georgia? I said, the one who used to look like, she had a skin like a lizard. What's her name? Jayla. Y'all remember her? Some of y'all remember her. That's good. I'm, I'm glad. Anyway, he brought her up here. She had asthma from here to the bottom of her feet. Skin cracking, bleeding, itching. Can you imagine that? You know, come on. If you stand in a tent, it's hot at night. And you suffering all this. Laid hands on her, nothing took place. But guess what? Something did take place. Uh-oh. You know why? Because healing is something that takes place over a process of time. You know right? So we went down there as a community to Straightway, Georgia, and guess who one of the first persons come running up to me smiling? See, ain't nothing about this tall. What's the name again? Jayla, she about this call come cheesing with Mama Nelly sitting next to her cheek. She comes, runs up to me, and, 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 and anybody know what a tourniquet feel like? That's what she feel like on my leg and waist when she hugs you. All she doing is giving thanks. Not so much to me as to you go 
having asthma for six years and can't really sleep at night and scratching all the time to not scratching at all. Ooh, isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? So, Israel, you have the power. It can't be just something you agree with in the imagination of your mind. It has to come in agreement from the spirit. That's where the belief originates from. You can't just give mental assent. We can't all agree and just say, okay, all right, yeah, that wall's light blue. We, we get it. We get it. All right, we understand that. But that's what we do, and that's how we approach a lot of things in this life. We just make a little simple agreements, and we think that we're in the faith, and we're not. It has to go deeper than that. Y'all hear me? If they preach this word and there is no power, y'all did not call them. Anyone can speak well. Anyone can research books. But this does not give them the power. Uh, this does not give you the power of your life. Save yourselves. And do not waste your time listening to these folks. Save yourself. Fire or light. Fire. Anybody ever heard me uh, call fire and tell it to burn up? sin and burn up iniquity and transgressions what is the Holy Spirit if you've been wait a minute now most of you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit right yeah but how many have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with fire uh oh no 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 yeah there is a baptism of the Holy Spirit but then there's a baptism of the Holy Spirit of fire man I mean I need to probably teach on that a little a little bit more deeper in that. Listen, when you obey Yah, He will give you more power. The anointing that lives inside of us is to be imparted, transferred, administered by the laying on of hands or touch. And Luke 10 80 says, And whatsoever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as set before you. That don't mean that you go to a Roman providence or, or, or you go to Japan down to the damn fish market. He was sent to his own. You don't go down here and barbecue. Well, Jesus said it. <laughs> he was sent before you and asked no question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want some barbecue? I'm not asking any questions, but just put it here. Boy. And heal the sick that are therein. And say unto him, the kingdom of Yah has come nigh to you. Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask, I think according to the what? According to the what? Power. That do what? Worthy. So all these scriptures on power, 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 power. Yet and still we're lazy and lethargic. You got to do something, right? Let me show you how Yah's anointing is always with us, his people even after death. Y'all remember Elisha? Y'all remember Elisha? Remember, you had Elijah and then Elisha. Elisha, was, what did he do? Elisha did what? And they did what? And the bands of the Moabs invaded the land at the coming end of the year. Now, where's Elisha? At? Dead and he buried, right? And it came to pass as they were burying a man that behold, they spied a band of raiders and they cast the man into the tomb of who? And when the man was let down, he touched the of who? And he revived. Y'all hear? Now let me tell you something. When my time is up, don't y'all be digging my damn grave up and throwing people on top of me. That damn pastor now, man. <laughs> yeah, we seen him bring back a couple people from dead, so maybe we just dig him up, get some bones, throw them on top of them. They may be revived. Don't do it. Y'all better not touch me. Don't touch my bones. You got to talk to these wise guys, man. Everybody get these, you know. Mind you, 
Elijah is dead and buried. And they put the guy in the tomb, he touched the bones, and he all of a sudden, man, you wouldn't have to worry about the Moabites are coming like that out of ran. Many people think they're excited about seeing dead people come back to life. You throw somebody on some bones and put them like it, they ain't revive and see what you do. Us today, we probably grab our guns, start shooting. <laughs> That'd be a bad thing, isn't it? Oh! Ah, Bro, I didn't mean to kill you again. <laughs> and you know what we would do, right? Father, please forgive us, then throw them right back on the bones again. You notice how we think? And he stood up on his feet. Remember Paul's sweat claw? Paul's sweat claw? Paul's sweat claw? And continually, by the space of two years, so that they that dwell in Asia heard the word of the master Jesus, both the Jews and the Greeks. And Yah wrought what kind of miracles? By who hands? So that from his body were bought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons. And the disease departed from them and the evil spirit went out of them. I had somebody write me in a letter and just told me to, to get a handkerchief and wipe my body on it and send it to them so they could be healed. I did it too. I ain't heard nothing back, but I did it. Oh, the reason why I do it because of the anointing. You know, some people don't think I'm anointed. Some people think I'm a pretty bad cat, man. They just don't know I'm not a bad cat at all. But I don't want nobody telling nobody that, though. Y'all going to mess up my game. They got to know I'm a bad cat. Isn't that right? They got to know I'm a bad cat. So, handkerchiefs. Look at this. Sweat cloth. That is a towel. The wiping of perspiration. You know, when you're sweating good. Now, who would want a stinky, nasty sweat cloth? I know quite a few that would. My sides be looking like this. And the other one go, uh-uh. <laughs> I got two to go, yeah, though. One of them go, uh-uh. Isn't that amazing? So the one go, uh-uh, ain't going to be healed. I got to try to make them feel bad. <laughs> anyway, so checking other ministries, see if they're talking about the Ruach. And you can only preach and teach and talk like this if you have him and you are known of him. That's a confidence that comes with those of us who really know the real Jesus. All right? But you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You'll be witnessing me in both Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and the other most parts of the earth, which we have already read. Now, we've seen a whole bunch of scriptures here this morning related to power. Yet and still, men are sent. Listen, you have to spend time with the Holy Spirit in order for him to be able to, here's the word right here, entrust you with his power. Did you hear what I said? You don't believe how many people that he has entrusted with their power, with his power, and then they turn around and took the glory for themselves. Now, don't get me wrong. He got a place for them, too. Are you following me? There's a lot of people that turn around and take the glory for themselves. And without him, we can't do nothing. It's all because of him. Y'all hear me? He's the one that's given us the Holy Spirit. He's the one that's given us the power. And it's because of him, in him, we live, we move, and we have our being. There's nobody before him. There's nobody after him. He is it. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the great I am. And there will be no other. Are y'all hearing me? Now, we got a debate coming up. This is going to be light work right here. 
It's going to be extremely light work. As a matter of fact, I almost, I almost for about that long feel guilty for debating. That long. That's how bad it's going to be. It is sad. When I tell y'all somebody's a Hindu, then guess what they are? They are Hindu. Along with Buddhist, Sarmatian, and all this other stuff. Anybody seen the post on Facebook the other day? When he said, to my goddesses, and I, yeah, that's right, I said goddesses. Let me tell y'all women nothing. They ain't a damn thing goddess about you. Y'all Israelite sisters. Y'all hear me? Egyptology. We are literally dealing with what we're seeing on the book come off the pages. We're literally watching false teachers and false prophets right among us. And you know the first thing they attack? The Torah. The first thing is under fire is the Torah. Can y'all believe it? Now don't the book says thy righteousness is an everlasting righteous and your what? Is the what? And that's the first thing you attack. Now who attacks the truth? That's it. That's it. I mean, it's bad. It's bad. So the only thing we can do now is try to recover a few. Are you following me? I'm sure Teacher Eric's working on it too. So, um, and y'all notice, I drop a little jab, but I ain't dropping no nuggets. That's coming. But have y'all learned anything what I told y'all what novices do? Yeah, they, they can't help it. That's just part of youth. They, they can't help but run their mouth. It's also part of foolish old men, too. They can't hold water. They got to get out there and tell everything because they're trying to indoctrinate and gain as many people as they can before the truth comes. Have them already massaged into believing the lies. All they did was take Yahshua to show you one truth and it set you free, didn't it? Hmm? Set you free, didn't it? Anybody ever made a mistake I did? When you first received the Holy Spirit and truth, the first thing you did was run out and want to go tell everybody about it. this joy that you had. And then you ask yourself, what happened? I thought people would be excited. But instead, they became your enemy. They separated from you. They hated you. Don't want nothing to do with you anymore. The total opposite happened, didn't it? And you scratching your head. Now, wait a minute. Didn't these people say they love Jesus? What happened? They don't love Jesus. I hope you do. Now, spend some time with the both side of y'all. All right, we're coming up on the fall feast. It's, it's, it's quicker. How many weeks are we out? Where's Ash Potter? Is she gone? How many weeks are we out from Tabernacle? The feast. I know we got, I know we can't be no more than eight, nine weeks. With nine weeks, nine, y'all know how fast that's going to come? Y'all know how fast it's going to come? Well, I hope y'all getting yourself ready and getting ready now because nine weeks, man, there's going to be over 800 people out here. And there ain't going to be no shortage of us having ourselves ready to make sure that Yahshua can do his work. Yeah. All right, yeah. All right, now. Immediately after this, I need to have everybody that lives on the land of straightway. Did y'all hear what I said? Yes, everybody that lives on the land of straightway. Um, the sisters wanted, wanted us to take a, a picture. We should have been doing this every year, but we ain't never did it. You know what I mean? But if you live on the land of straightway, then you need to come up here and let's go ahead and take our picture, okay? Y'all get it? Now, don't, don't let me have to get in my rebuke stage because you want to be in a picture and you don't live on the land. I'm going to hurt your feelings. Glory to the king. Let us stand. Let the words of my mouth, let the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Yah, my strength and my redeemer, you dismiss in the beautiful name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom, King God.